Hello students, welcome to SR Concepts. I am Ravi Verma and in this video we will discuss the topic the structure of an atom. As you can see I am using uh, an NCRT PDF. This is because the topics which we are going to study have been given in a very good form in your NCRT book. Just like notes they are given and also if you are watching this video you will be familiar with your content of your uh, textbook right so that when you will revise the topic from your NCRT textbook it will be quite easy to you so dear students uh, let's start the topic that is structure of an atom so dear students as you know uh, in the previous video we have discussed about the discovery of electron proton and the neutrons which are known as subatomic particles you know that Dalton Dalton has proposed that atom was indestructible and indivisible but the discovery with the discovery of these electron proton and neutron now we know that uh, that aspect of the Dalton atomic theory was not correct now to the scientific world it became quite important or necessary we can say to consider where the electron and protons are arranged in an atom so the scientific community started to think about uh, the structure of atom they tried to investigate uh, about the structure of atom right so first of all jj thompson proposed uh, the first uh, explanation of the structure of atom that is called uh, the model for the structure of an atom proposed by jj thompson so what we are going to study now the first uh, model of an atom given by thompson right that is called thompson's model of an atom so dear students uh, thompson proposed the model of an atom to be similar to that of a christmas pudding christmas pudding means he said that uh, the atom is actually a positive sphere as you can see there is a positive sphere and the electrons which are negatively charged are embedded in this positive sphere in the same way as the dry fruits are embedded in a christmas pudding that is a type of cake he also compared the structure of an atom with the structure of a watermelon he said that electrons are embedded in the positively charged sphere in the same way as the seeds are embedded in a watermelon as you know that in a watermelon there is a sphere and seeds are embedded like this so he said that electrons are embedded in a positively charged sphere in the same way as the seeds are embedded in a watermelon how did he explain that atom is electrically neutral according to him the negative charge the total negative charge on all the electrons is equal to the total positive charge of the sphere so dear students as i said that everything is given just like notes in your ncert textbook here you can see the two important postulates have been given for the thomson's model of an atom let's read them they are quite easy what is written first of all an atom consists of a positively charged sphere and the electrons are embedded in it second the negative and positive charges are equal in magnitude so atoms a, atom as a whole is electrically neutral so the advantage of thomson's model of an atom was that that he was successful in explaining the neutrality of an atom or electrical neutrality of the atom but the results of experiments carried out by many other scientists could not be explained by this model this was a drawback of thomson's model of an atom distance we will discuss about the results of rutherford's experiments in the next topic so let's take that topic now Rutherford's model of an atom means an explanation of structure of atom given by Rutherford is given here. First of all, Rutherford, after being interested in knowing how electrons 
are arranged within an atom designed an experiment for this purpose in this experiment what he did in this experiment a beam of fast moving alpha particles we can say right fast moving alpha particles were made to fall on a thin gold foil how was the setup let's see suppose that this is a thin gold foil this is the source of alpha particles which are fast fastly moving like this which are fastly moving like this right and there is a detector behind the gold foil which detected if any alpha particle is passing the gold foil or not this detector was connected to the computer also so basically there are two two things one is the fast moving alpha particles and the second thing is the gold foil let's learn something more about this experiment look at these points these are given just like notes first there is a question why did rutherford used a gold foil why did he not take any other metal the reason is that he selected a gold foil because he wanted as thin a layer as possible the gold being most malleable metal right gold is the most malleable metal so gold is the only metal which can be beaten into the thinnest sheets that's why he took uh, the gold foil you know the gold foil was only 1000 atoms thick so the total thickness of uh, the gold foil was around 1000 atoms second what are alpha particles let's understand alpha particles are doubly charged doubly charged helium ions means they are actually the nuclei or nucleus of helium atoms and each alpha particle has four unit of mass we can say four unified mass right and they have two unit positive charge so fast moving alpha particles are quite heavy that's why they have a considerably large amount of energy so dear students uh, rutherford was thinking that yes exactly the alpha particles are very heavy particles we can say because they have four unit of mass and if they are moving very fastly obviously they will have a large amount of momentum a large amount of energy now it was expected when rutherford was doing this experiment he expected that alpha particles would be deflected by subatomic particles in the gold atoms since alpha particles were much heavier than protons he did not expect to see large deflections because he was thinking that uh, in an atom there should there should be protons electrons and neutrons however the alpha particle is very heavy as compared to all these three uh, means particles however neutron was not discovered at that time so rutherford was thinking that there are electrons and protons somewhere right um, and uh, he was thinking that uh, um, uh, alpha particle is quite heavy so there will not be large deflections uh, in the path of alpha particles now look at this a little bit more picture will be clear suppose these are the fast moving alpha particles these are the fast moving alpha particles you can notice what is being observed here this is being observed that most of the particle uh, uh, most of the alpha particles are passing through the gold foil in straight direction without any deflection here you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so most of the alpha particles are passing straight without any deflection right but you can see only one you can see that is passing through the gold foil with a little deflection means it came here this was the direction but later it changed the direction so only very little fraction uh, is getting deflected while passing through the gold foil but even smaller than that number of alpha particles are rebounding means they are bouncing back here you can see 
so very little number of particles is bouncing back so what were actually the observations of this experiment these are again written in a very good short form what is written most of the alpha particles so these are called actually the observations of rutherford's model of an atom these are the observations what observations were made by rutherford let's read them most of the fast moving alpha particles passed straight through the gold foil means there was no deflection in their direction second some of the alpha particles were deflected by the gold foil by small angles so again little number of particles deflected with a small angle while they passed through the gold foil however they did not bounce back now look at the third one what is written written surprisingly one out of every 12000 particles appeared to rebound means very small number of particles appeared to rebound rebound means striking and then coming back right so these are those particles which could not even enter or we can say which could not pass uh, the gold foil so these three observations are very important in the words of rutherford this result was almost as incredible as if you fire a 15 inch shell or bullet at a piece of paper tissue and it comes back and hits you so this one as you can see that certain particles bounced back how is this possible a very big alpha particle that is having four unit of mass and two unit of positive charge is bouncing back by striking on just electrons or protons so this is quite strange to rutherford it was not expected it was expected that they will pass and deviate from their path but how they could rebound while they are themselves very heavy so let's read further after looking at these observations after thinking about this observation we can understand the importance of this observation by reading this point what is written let us think of an activity in an open field to understand the implications of this experiment let a child stand in front of a wall with his eyes closed right let him throw stones at the wall from a distance he will hear a sound when each stone strikes the wall if he repeats this 10 times he will hear the sound 10 times so suppose there is a wall suppose this is a big wall in a ground and a child is throwing stones over it so every time his eyes are closed he will throw one stone he will hear one sound again he will throw second stone again he will hear second sound right means this the stones are bouncing back but if a blind folded child were to throw stones at a barbed wire fence wire fence means uh, you 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 might have seen in army area there are wired fences right most of the stones would not hit the fence and no sound would be heard this is because there are lots of gaps in the fence which allow the stones to pass through them so if there is a fence like this right if there is fencing like this and a child having closed his eyes is throwing stones on it you can see most of the stones will pass through this space and only very little will strike on these wires and will bounce back you can imagine this very well right so this is because there is a lot of space in between the wires of a fence something similar could uh, something similar was the observation is rutherford made as you can see the gold foil acted just like a fence for alpha particles as you can see that most of the alpha particles passed most of the alpha particles passed while only very little deflected from their direction while they are passing and very little means one out of 12000 bounced back so this is just like the same situation is someone is throwing stones on a barbed uh, wild fence right okay so following similar reasoning the same type of reasoning 
while he was thinking he was using the same type of reasoning and rutherford concluded that uh, from the alpha particle scattering experiment that what he concluded from the first observation he concluded that most of the space inside the atom is empty because most of the alpha particles passed through the gold foil without getting deflected so we can say that most of the space of an atom is empty that's why the particles are passing through them straight most of the particles are passing straight without any deflection from the second conclusion sorry from the second observation you can see the second observation is some of the alpha particles were deflected by gold foil by small angles so from this observation he thought that very few particles were deflected from their path this indicates that positive charge of the atom occupies very little space let's understand this as you can see that very little particles got deflected like this this is because you know alpha particle is itself positively charged means it has two unit positive charge right so alpha particle is positively charged he must have deflected only when it comes very close to the nucleus as you can see here is the nucleus so when it comes very close to the positive charge so because the number of such particles which were being deflected with small angles was very less he thought that positive charge is concentrated in a very little small space right so we can say that positively the positive charge of an atom occupies very little and small space as compared to the whole size of the atom right now if we look at the third observation in which we see that only one out of 12000 particles bounced back and you know that something bounces back when it strikes to something that has a lot of mass that is heavy itself so the particle should bounce back only when something has considerable amount of mass so from this observation he concluded that a very small fraction of alpha particles were deflected by 180 means they bounced back they gone and they bounced back this is indicating that all positive charge and mass of the gold atom were concentrated in a very small volume within the atom means there is certain particle at the center of the atom which has all the positive charge and all the mass in itself means mass and positive charge is highly concentrated in a very very small space right that's why most of the particles are passing very little particles very number very small or little number of particles are getting deflected and very very small number of particles are bouncing back because they are striking to that particular uh, center of the nucleus in which all the mass and positive charge is occupied okay so from the data he concluded he calculated that there is a nucleus in the atom which contains all the positive charge and all the mass and the size of the nucleus is around 10 to the power 5 times smaller or less than the radius of the atom so we can say that uh, we can say that the whole size of the atom is around 10 to the power 5 times larger as compared to the size of the nucleus and what is nucleus nucleus contains all the positive charge and all the mass of the atom so finally he given the structure of the atom in the form of certain postulates let's read the postulates of rutherford's model of an atom after making observations after making conclusions right he given the postulates right what are the postulates let's read them there is positively charged center in an atom called nucleus nearly all the mass of the atom resides in the nucleus so we can say nucleus is positively charged and all the mass of atom is centered or concentrated inside the nucleus now electrons revolve around the nucleus in a circular path this is again very important he said that electrons are revolving around the nucleus in a circular path we can say suppose this is the nucleus then electrons are revolving something like this 
something like this so the size of nucleus is very small nucleus is positively charged and has the total mass of the atom almost total mass of the atom and electrons which are negatively charged are revolving around them nucleus is positively charged while the electrons are negatively charged the size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of the atom this was also the third postulate of rutherford's model of an atom now let's talk about the drawback of rutherford's model of an atom as you can see rutherford suggested that electrons are revolving in circular path suppose this is the electron this is the electron and this is revolving like this and you know when something is moving on a circular path it is undergoing acceleration right so during a circular motion the moving object is uh, is continuously under acceleration and you know to change the direction and to maintain the acceleration it need to lose the energy so the electrons should lose the energy and finally they should become less and less with the energy and they should be attracted towards the nucleus and they should fall finally on the nucleus that means atom is unstable because electrons are losing energy and they should fall on the nucleus but as we know that atoms are quite stable the matter is quite quite stable that means the atom is quite stable so we can say there is certain fault there is certain drawback in the structure as explained by rutherford means how it is possible that the electrons are revolving in a circular path why don't they lose energy and why don't they fall on the nucleus this could not be explained by rutherford so dear students thank you thank you for watching this video this was the topic of today in the next video we will learn about bohr's model of an atom in which this drawback of rutherford's model was actually clarified we can say he improved the structure the, the model of the atom a little bit more he explained how the electrons are revolving in the circular paths are they revolving in circular paths or not this was explained by bohr thank you